Hi, we're back here again at the Data 2.0 Conference in San Francisco, Mission Bay Conference Center. And we're sitting down with the founder and CEO of Twilio, Jeff Lawson. Um, Twilio's hot right now. Jeff, let's talk about it. What is Twilio? Well, Twilio is um, a platform as a service. Let's developers and their companies build scalable, reliable voice and SMS applications, right? So we take care of all of the uh, integration with carriers and all the sort of nuts and bolts, the telecom goo, we call it, and just expose a simple web-based API to developers to build applications, and, and developers are building all sorts of interesting communications applications on top of our APIs because it's now so easy, um, because you can get up and running, buy a phone number, and start sending and receiving text messages, sending and receiving phone calls in just minutes without having to learn anything about all the complexities of integrating with carriers and uh, voice and SMS and obscure protocols and all that kind of stuff. Um, and our whole idea is expose the world of telecom as an infrastructure, just like Amazon has exposed you know, storage and computing and queuing and all these primitives for the data center, Twilio exposes telecom as a primitive for communications. That's very interesting. And I actually asked about your logo over here. Can you describe your logo? Yep, it's uh, six circles. Uh, I think we made the logo in about five minutes, um, and it is uh, you know the idea is it's a phone receiver like you know the uh, the old big phone receiver you'd put up to your ear. This is the receiver side that uh, has the holes that the sound comes out of and goes into your head. Very cool. I actually love that Thank that you. jacket. So uh, let's talk about the need for Twilio. Why is it that you've decided to create this company? Yeah, so this is my fourth startup, um, and I did three startups prior to this, and after that I was a product manager at Amazon Web Services. Uh, and when I left Amazon, I was thinking about a, a bunch of different ideas that I wanted to build and was thinking about starting as a new company, and I realized that at each of my three previous companies, at some point, we had said, wow, wouldn't it be neat if our application could you know, make a phone call or let people call in or send a text message, right? And at every time that we had that need, we said that would be great. And then we looked at our engineering team and we said, wow, we got a bunch of web developers here. We don't know the first thing about telecom, right? Do we have to go work with a carrier? Do we have to go get gear? Do we have to, you know, it, it, it just all sorts of ambiguity around how to do it. And we said, you know what? Let's just, well, maybe some other time, right? Um, so I'll give you an example. I was the first uh, CTO of StubHub.com, the online ticketing exchange, right? And so the use case there was really interesting. We were doing the logistics of getting a ticket fulfilled from a seller to a buyer in a very short period of time. Uh, so we let people buy a ticket up until a few hours before the event. And we said, okay, well, how are we going to do this? We said, well, let's automate a phone call out to the seller. If the you know, Click buy on the website. Automate a phone call goes out to the seller. Hey, seller, uh, your ticket just sold. And then automate a phone call to a courier. Hey, courier, we need you to go pick up a ticket at this address. We need you to go bring it to AT&T Field and uh, do this by 6 p.m. Press 1 to confirm that you're going to do this. We have the whole workflow planned out. And again, looked at our team and we're like, well, a bunch of web developers. What do we know about doing this? You may as well have asked us to go build you a skyscraper, right? We just, you know, it's in the bucket of things we don't know how to build. Um, and so after having that experience three times in a row, I said, wow, we should really solve this problem. I bet there's a lot of people who want to build this stuff. Um, and then we use an Amazon Web Services style of solution, you know, simple APIs, pay-as-you-go pricing, let developers get up and running in minutes, um, and that's how we started Twilio. Wow, that's very interesting. Any things particularly about the future of data? And then a lot of people say that Web 2.0's future is data. What do you think about that? Um, that's interesting, right? So uh, I'll take a step back and I'll talk about, so I just got finished giving a talk about um, infrastructure and platform as a service companies like Twilio or Amazon or Rackspace or PayPal. Um, what is the role of data in what we're doing? Um, and you know the idea is that app using infrastructure throws off a lot of data, right? So for Twilio, it's what phone calls happened, what are your phone numbers, what SMSs happened, came and went, right? And so it's up to the platform provider like Twilio to decide what to do about it. So we actually have two methods of exposing that data to developers and letting them actually use that data and not just throw it away, right? So we actually believe that this data is valuable 
to the developers using our product, and so we keep it around for them. Um, so we have two things. We have a webhook API where when a phone call starts, we push the data out to the developer's application in real time. Um, and then second, we have a REST API that lets them query for historical data uh, and pull it all pull it all down and slice and dice and do whatever they want. And the combination there gives developers a lot of flexibility to figure out how to weave that data into their applications. Um, so there's an interesting example I gave, which is uh, we have a record verb that lets you record audio on a phone call, and it results in both a webhook and a REST resource being created. So you've got a, 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 an audio recording that now exists, and we actually give it a URL, stamp a URL on it, store it for you, and then webhook out to your app and say, here's that URL of the recording that was just generated, and let your app do what you want with it. But you can also query our API and say, hey, give me all the recordings that have occurred on my account, and recordings are like voicemails, right? This lets you build a user interface for a customer-facing application that just talks to our REST API and says, hey, give me all the recordings. I'm going to display them on a screen. If I hit play, it'll actually have pull down an MP3 version from our API, play it back right in the front end, and it means the developer doesn't have to build their own big data storage solution, right? They actually just use our API. And so we have this role uh, of accepting the big data burden for our customers um, and then giving them access to it in ways that let them build their apps on top of it. Very interesting. And so do you work with a lot of startups then? Yeah, we've got customers of all different sizes. We've got uh, everything from small startups all the way up through Fortune 100 companies using Twilio. The common thread there is it's easy to get up and running um, and easy to take an app from idea to production in very little time. Um, and that uh, turns out, right, it's great for startups who are you know, iterating rapidly. And it's great for large companies, too, because they get to take all the ambiguity out of a project where before you may have had to go to a vendor and say, oh, you know, we're going to have to do a six-month song and dance with the sales team, um, whereas now they can build the prototype using our APIs, see that it works, see that it solves the problem they need to solve, uh, and then engage us um, to say, you know, hey, and I need, uh, you know, an, an enterprise contract or an SLA or uh, 24 by 7 phone support, all these things that we can provide to enterprises who need it. And so I'm going to take it back to just being a startup entrepreneur. This is your fourth startup, you said. Uh, what is the one thing that you've learned throughout the process of building one startup after the other? Oh, man, you got uh, you got to do something that you love. Uh, that's the biggest thing I've learned, um, you know, to put in the hours and to put in the uh, just the amount of emotional and physical and mental uh, energy that you need to build a company. You have to love the product and you have to love the customer. Um, and that's what gets you through all the, the highs and the lows and all that kind of stuff. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jeff, for taking the time out to sit down with us and talk to us about Twilio. Um, good luck with everything. And um, we can follow at Twilio. And also, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, I'm Jeff E.L., J-E-F-F-I-E-L. Great. And uh, watch for more interviews here at the Data 2.0 conference. I'm Arabella Santiago.